Now, let me talk mostly about this report that your North Carolina Election Board put out. I've read a lot of reports like this, and I had to tell you, I started laughing when I read this report because it was one of the worst reports I've seen in terms of faulty analysis. And let me tell you why. They took the 12.2 million uh, DMV list, the driver's license list, and compared it to the 6.6 .6 million registered voter list. But very interesting, if you look at footnote one, they say, oh, by the way, we compared this to the registered list of active and inactive voters. Now, for those of you who don't know that term, inactive voters are voters who, for example, they've sent a notice out to their registered address and the Postal Service has sent it back saying, this person doesn't live here. Inactive voters are individuals who uh, in strong probability is they've moved or they've died. And is that a faulty number to include? Uh, yes, it certainly is. The only reason to do that is to inflate the numbers of people with uh, an out ID. Now, you don't have to take my opinion for that. If you look at the federal district court decision over Indiana's photo ID law, the plaintiffs in that case their experts report, which claimed huge numbers of people in Indiana without a photo ID law, the judge threw out that report saying it was utterly unreliable. And one of the reasons it was unreliable is because he had included inactive voters in his comparison. So that is a completely uh, wrong factor taken into account. The report also does not say that they took into account UACAVA voters and took them out of the list. UACAVA, that's one of those Washington acronyms. You know, I, I once heard a judge in Texas on a UACAVA case refer to it as that uh, avocado law. But UACAVA stands for the Uniformed and Overseas Citizens Absentee Voting Act. This is a federal law that guarantees the rights of American military personnel and their families who are stationed overseas and American civilians who are stationed overseas to vote in our elections. And I can tell you that every election official everywhere in the country knows which of their registered voters are UACAVA voters because they have to keep track of that data. One, because there are special rules that apply and special accommodations that apply to those voters. And because every year they have to file a report with a federal agency on their UACAVA voters. But the North Carolina board didn't take the UACAVA voters out of their list of registered voters for the comparison. Why does that show another invalid point in their comparison? Well, because any UACAVA voter has a United States passport or a military ID with a photo ID, and my understanding of the bill being contemplated says that both of those items would satisfy the law. So clearly, those people, they may not have a driver's license here, but they've got an ID that counts, and yet the board didn't take those people out. The newspaper story I saw also said that another ID that will count is a state employee ID and a University of North Carolina system ID, in other words, student ID. Well, why didn't the North Carolina board run their voter registration list against the list of state employees, which I'm sure there's a state agency has that list, why didn't they send it to the regents of the college system and run it against the list of college students to take those people off that have those ID? They're a state agency. They clearly would have access to this data, yet they didn't run it. They only used exact matches. That is guaranteed to give you false positives. Why? Well, my name is uh, Hans Anatol von Spakovsky. I know, typical name for somebody from Alabama. Uh, if I'm listed as Hans Anatol von Spakovsky on the voter registration list, but I'm listed as Hans middle initial A von Spakovsky on the DMV list, under an exact match, it'll say I'm two different people and I don't have a driver's license. So that clearly is another problem with the study. Also, according to the study, Voters with a driver's license that has been revoked, suspended, or expired would not show up as having an ID. That exact same thing was done when Georgia's photo ID law was in court, and the judge there said, well, that, that calls into question your list. 
Because obviously someone who has had a driver's license revoked, suspended, uh, or expired has all the documents they need to get a ID from the state. There were 134,000 out of the 600,000 people that they said don't have an ID who list a driver's license number, but they couldn't find it. So they clearly believe there may have been a data entry order.